Welcome back to Wood Engineering. I'm Jeff Orochko from Carleton University. And in this video, we are going to continue to discuss um, bolted connection failures in uh, and bolted connection design for timber connections. And uh, previous videos, we talked about two of the potential failure modes, one being yielding, the other one being row shear. And in this video, we're gonna start by talking about group tear out failure modes. So this is something that if you've done steel design will also be familiar uh, to you because in steel design, we design for these group tear out failure modes. So you can imagine, uh, you know, row shear is uh, pretty easy to imagine. You could also imagine that as I pull on a piece of wood, if I have, uh, you know, a group of bolts in this piece of wood, you know, I have bolts, you know, here, 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 then you could imagine that instead of pulling out two strips of wood, they could pull out like a whole chunk a whole chunk of the piece of wood. Now, in order to do that in wood is a little bit more difficult than in steel because to pull out the chunk, I have to fail both in shear, but also I have to fail in tension. And you remember that for wood in tension, it's quite a bit stronger than wood in shear. So for a group pullout failure mode to happen, um, we basically have to have pretty short rows and the bolts probably have to be pretty close together. Um, in the uh, cross-section dimension so that I have a relatively small tension piece that I need to fail. Okay, so it looks something like this. So instead of pulling out two plugs, which are plug rows, um, I pull out basically the entire member. So you, uh, not the entire member, I pull out a big chunk of wood material from the center. And you have to imagine for these failure modes to exist, all the bolts have to move together. So I have to move all four bolts at the same time. They all have to move and they have to pull out a uh, chunk of uh, wood with them. Okay, so in this case, instead of having two shear planes per row for row shear, I don't have rows anymore. I just have one big chunk and that chunk has uh, only one shear plane on each side. Okay, so it still has two shear planes. So I have a shear plane over here and I have a shear plane over here. But in addition to that, I have basically a tension failure. Let me draw that in a bit of a better place. So I have to fail two basically shear planes plus one tension plane. And that one tension plane, you know, per unit length is gonna be significantly stronger than the shear planes because the shear planes are basically, we're failing the lignin. We talked about this with the straws. So if I'm shearing like this, it's relatively easy, but to actually fail a part of that intention. So even if I just take a few of the straws in the middle and try to fail that intention, I ha basically have to rupture the straws. So it's quite a bit stronger in that, in uh, that direction. Okay, so unlike row shear, I can't get this in both directions. So if I have my group tear out and I'm tearing, I'm pulling on this member so the bolts want to pull out the bottom, uh, that's a way that I can get group tear out. But if I'm pushing on this and the bolts are pulling, pushing into the middle, then I can't have a group tear out. So, you know, um, critical to the failure of tear out is that I need to be able to tear a piece out. I didn't need that in row shear. In row shear, I could fail those shear planes uh, and have that in combination with a small embedment failure at the end of one of the bolts. Okay, but I can't get that in group tear out. I can't tear out a chunk into the piece of wood. So I only have to worry about this failure mode if I have um, loads that are parallel to grain and that they are uh, basically pulling towards a loaded end. Okay, so how do we determine what is the strength for uh, group tear out. Let's look at the mechanics of this situation. Okay, so if I want to pull this chunk out, okay, oh, I missed one of the bolts. If I wanna pull this chunk out, all the bolts have to go down and they all have to go out of the piece of wood and take a chunk with them. So I'm gonna have to cut out a piece that looks something like this. Okay, so what about the shear side of that? Okay, so if I look at, um, you know, if I look at just the edge here, 
Okay, if I'm just looking at the shear part of that, we can notice that the shear plane is um, similar to what it looked like when we had um, uh, our row shear. So let me make this one solid because this is the part that's actually breaking. Okay, so if I'm only interested in the right line there, the right orange line, and I need to find the shear resistance of that line, uh, you know, we already looked at how to calculate shear resistance of shear planes when we looked at row shear resistance. Now, if you look at this specific case, um, along that line, uh, we only have to shear one side of the bolts, not both. So for row shear, we needed the green line and the orange line to pull out the plug. But here, we're pulling out the whole center of this, so we don't need to shear the green line anymore. So basically the shear resistance of that orange vertical line is just half of what the row shear resistance would be for that row. So we already have a calculation method to find the row shear resistance. So if I take half of that, then I'm going to have basically the uh, shear resistance of just that one-sided um, shear plane. Okay, what if I look at the, um, um, what if I look at this bit now? Okay, so the side shear planes we just talked about, what about this um, um, bit that's in the middle? So we're talking about basically I need to fail these thick orange lines in um, net tension failure, basically. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to need to calculate um, the length of those lines. So if I go from center to center, this would be Basically, uh, in this particular case, this would be two times my SC, which is my column spacing, or SQ if I'm talking about um, 08619, which is the perpendicular to grain spacing. Okay, so I have basically in this case two individual um, bolt spacings, right? One between here and here, and one between here and here, right? So those are my two bolt spacings. That's why it's two times. Okay, now if I want to find the length of just the orange lines, then I have to remove um, the bolt holes, okay, because this is a net tension. This is a net tension, not gross. And so we're going to find the net area for PG means uh, for group tear out. So for load P is load compression or tension, G is for group tear out. I is for this particular member, then it's going to be two times SC. Okay, I'm just going to use SC for now. It could be SQ, which is the total length. And then I'm going to subtract half a hole on the left minus the full hole in the middle minus another half hole on the right. And I'm going to multiply all of that, of course, by the thickness T to get the area of those planes. And so I get basically two SC minus two times hole diameter uh, times T. And we have to remember that the hole diameter is bigger than the bolt diameter, and we usually assume it's bigger by two millimeters. Okay, so then what's the resistance in tension? Tension resistance, we would expect to look something like FT times APGI. So FT would be our strength in terms of stress, and APGI would be the cross-sectional area. We've done that area before. Of course, we're also going to have some phi factor on there in general. Okay, so then um, the last bit that I want to point out is with regard to shear resistance. Let's remember how we um, how we talked about row shear resistance before, because we're going to need the row shear resistance for here. Okay, so when we had row shear resistance, we called those PR. That's for, you know, tension compression. R is for row shear. Um, and we called that IJ. So this one, we could call that PRI NR, okay, where NR. So where P and I R, PRI. Remember I, NR for row NR. So if we had three rows, we have row one, we have row two, we have row three, we have three rows, so NR is three. So PRI NR is PRI three. It's just the last row. Okay, where NR is just the number of rows, so NR is the last row. 
Okay, and then the one at the beginning is PRI1, where one basically means it's the first row. Why do we need these? Because basically when we do row shear, uh, this one is the first row, and this one is the last row. So we're going to need the row shear for the first row and the row shear for the last row. And remember, we're going to need only half of each of those. Okay, so if I wanted to add up what's the total um, shear resistance that is inside this group tear-out mode where I have half a row shear on the left and half a row shear on the right, then that is going to be half of PRI1 plus half of PRI n r where n r is the last row and if i group those together i will find something like pri1 plus pri n r and divided by two so it's basically the average of the two row shears and the reason that i'm pointing this out is because we find this exactly in the equation um, for group tear out and that's where it comes from okay so now let's go through the full group tear out resistance calculation procedure Okay, so just like row shear, I'm only calculating at one time the resistance of one side of the connection. So I have my left side, my right side, these are connected together. Sorry, I should do it opposite because of the flip. I have my left side and my right side. These two are joined together. And uh, so I'm going to calculate group tear from the left side using this uh, uh, approach. And then after I'm done the entire approach, I can come back and find row shear, uh, sorry, group tear for the right side, this side here failing. Um, and that's if both of my sides are wood. If one of my sides is steel, then I'm going to use the steel code to the steel standard to calculate the group tear out there. Um, okay. Uh, which we're not going to do in this, uh, in this course. So, um, for one side of the connection, I have to do this, uh, for each member, I have to calculate the group tear out. And then later I'm going to add up all the members on that side to um, find the total group tear out resistance for that side of the connection. So just to remind ourselves is what we're talking about. So if I have a three member connection, I have two members on the left side and one member on the right side. So I'm gonna find group tear out for this member first, then this member, then I'm gonna add those together and that will give me the group tear out resistance for the left side of the equation. That's the, uh, that's the approach. Okay, so let's go back and uh, talk about how to actually do it. So, um, so for each member, I'm going to calculate group tear out resistance, and this is the equation to do it. Okay, so that's the overall equation. Okay, this first part here is obviously the uh, shear planes strength, and that PR. I1 plus PRINR divided by 2 is just what we talked about here. So it's half the row shear of the first row, half the row shear of the nth row, like the final row. And so that's how we get that. And then this bit here is our net tension, right? Where APGI is our net area between the first and the last rows, taking into account, of course, the bolt holes. So it's basically the area across those thick orange lines right there, as we already talked about. Okay, so it totally makes sense. Now here we have KD, KS, TKT on the right for the net tension, but how come we don't have it on the left? That's because PRI1 and PRINR, which we learned about when we calculated row shear, already includes KD, KS, VKT. So it's already built into the PR. Um, values that we use there. So we don't include it again twice. Okay, we have to be careful that uh, PRI1 and PRINR have to be in Newtons if we want this equation to work out in terms of units. So that's very important. Otherwise, you're going to mix units, right? Because FT is an MPA, APGI is going to be in millimeters squared. So MPA times millimeters squared is going to be in Newtons. So then to add this, which is going to be in Newtons, to this, uh, the one on the left has to be in Newtons as well. So that's a, that's, an, that's a tripping point that a lot of people will run into when using this equation if they're not careful. Okay, FT is our tension strength of wood, which we get from our regular um, tables. 
Okay, and APGI, as we said, is just the critical perpendicular net area between the first and the last row. So it's basically the area between the bolt holes, um, between those first and last rows. Okay, so then that gives me PR, that's row shear strength for I, row shear resistance, PRR, row shear resistance for member I, PRRI. And then uh, if I have multiple members on that side of the connection, like if I have a three member connection, then I have to um, add them all up. If I don't, then the addition is trivially easy because I just add one element. Okay, so PGRT, group tear out strength, uh, group tear out PG, R for resistance, T for total. So for all the members on that side of the connection is the sum of the PGRI, the group tear out resistance for each member I. So if I only have one member, then PGRT just equals PGRI for that uh, only uh, single member. And uh, that's it. That's how you calculate your group tear out resistance. Okay, so uh, the next one is a pretty quick one because we've basically done it before, which is net tension failure. Okay, so net tension, which we've looked at before, we've done net tension strength before, is just basically cutting off the uh, entire cross section of the piece at uh, the minimum net section failure uh, location. So that will be the furthest bolt, basically. Can I have net tension failure here in the second line? No, because then only half of the bolts would be coming off the bottom of the connection. Remember, whatever failure I have in my connection, all the bolts have to separate off of the main body of the connection. So in this case, this whole part here comes off. It's not a plug anymore. It's just I've basically pulled off the bottom of the connection. Um, so this is pretty tricky to do, as you can imagine, because I have a lot of tension failure, and tension is much stronger than uh, shear failure in wood, uh, as we've talked about before. But if I cut out enough of my piece of wood and maybe my uh, the bottom of my connection is long enough that it's very difficult to fail in row shear uh, or I have a lot of bolts I have a really long uh, row shear connection to fail then I could definitely get net tension failure uh, okay so uh, we can basically skip directly to how to calculate this because uh, we as I said we've done it before So just like row shear and group tear out, we're still dealing with just one side of the connection at a time. And if we have multiple members on each side of the connection, then we find the net area for each of those members, and then we're gonna add them together in the second step. But in order to actually do the net tension uh, calculation, it's very easy because we've done it before. We just use the net area calculation from clauses 6.5.9 or 7.5.11. So one is for, remember, lumber timber. The other one is for glue lamp. Um, so that uh, that calculation we've covered before. And basically it's just F, uh, FT or FTN for glue lamp multiplied by the net area multiplied by a, a material reduction factor. So it's very easy. So I just set my TNRI uh, for that. <clears throat> Um, one thing that we need to remember is that the net area um, is the gross area minus the bolt holes. So just like before, so I'm going to put a note up here about that. Okay, so I have to remember to take out the bolt holes, and I have to remember that the bolt holes are bigger than the bolts by about 2 millimeters. And also that uh, we have a limit on our net area, which we've seen multiple times. And we talked about this very early on, that my net area has to be greater than or equal to 75% of my gross area. So I can only cut out at most 25%. Okay, so then once I find my uh, tension strength, my net tension strength in the connection for each member on that side of the connection, then I find the total resistance. That gives us TNRT, which is my net tension strength 
total, which is the net tension strength of all the members on that side of the connection together. So if I have a three member connection, uh, the one that we looked at before, on my left side, I had two members on that side of the connection, I'm gonna add up the net tension strength for both. If the net tension strength is the same, I'm just gonna multiply it by two and calculate it once. Okay, so I'm gonna put one last cut in here. This video, we uh, looked at uh, gross um, tear out uh, and then we looked at net tension um, and uh, sorry, group tear out, not gross tear out. And then in the next video, we are going to finish up bolted connections by looking at the splitting failure mode, which is the one that's perpendicular to grain and also how we sum it all up to get a summary of all the bolted connection requirements and how we deal with um, if I have a combination of splitting and um, parallel to grain failure modes like net tension and group pullout.